right now, that is your position in the litigation. It's not a factual finding. It's substantively before me. And if that is the case, then there will be a different ruling made that will impact this trial that may result in a mistrial, that may result in a mistrial with prejudice, but that would not impact a reconsideration of bond. All right. Um, a lot of what comes next is evidentially specific. Um, and before we get to that, I know that there are some outstanding um, bond motions. So, Mr. Uh, Steele, on behalf of Mr. Williams, has filed a motion for bond reconsideration, but Mr. Steele, you essentially go back and argue anew um, all of the um, the factors that the whichever I don't even know who who took up the bond to begin with, but another court has already considered all of those the Ayala factors, um, and you don't present changed circumstances. You yeah, just me essentially too, Barry. say this call was wrong to begin with and you should do it over. And I am not going to reconsider any bond issues that have already been considered and ruled upon by a uh, another court absent legitimate change circumstances. So that- Oh, no. Bond just got denied. Nobody is getting bond. Dang. So it's looking like Judge Whitaker is going to move forward with this trial because it's looking like the mistrial is a little bit shaky. Sounds like that got denied when it comes to bond. She said somebody else already heard that. We're not going to go over bond again. Y'all are stuck. Wow. Yeah, Lil Woody is over there dancing in the streets right now. Dang. That motion is denied. Can I uh, address the court? Do you have changed circumstances? Yes. So, okay, go ahead. I, there weren't any in your motion. Exactly. Time served. Wow. Has been in custody since the ninth day of May of 2022. There you go. This is in my motion. He had, or it should be in my motion. He has sat through unnecessary jury selection for months, bringing in over 2,000 people when the jurors were chosen from the first 511. Crazy. That should not be on him. This is excess. He's now sat here for a month while. The antics of Judge Glanville and Lawyer Love and Lawyer Hilton caused him to just wander and squalor in a jail. Come on. The case is, God forbid there's a conviction, going to be reversed, potentially. Because these are serious issues, and I've raised them. I've Could put be them to the court. There are issues of confrontation clause violations, prosecutorial misconduct, judicial misconduct, not being present at a critical stage of proceedings. There is no reason to believe that Mr. Williams is fleeing. He would be crazy because if he flees, the case goes on because it's mid trial and he waives his appellate rights. He has the strongest ties to the community and the backing of wonderful people, both near and far, who are willing to come. Those are my changed circumstances. All right. Thank you. I do not can they are changed circumstances from yes things happened after the bond was decided to begin with i don't know how i would have decided the bond originally i that's not before me um those are not the kind of changed circumstances that uh speak to the iola factors and so i'm not going to reconsider the bond well, let me ask one more then oh. there is a judge who joined the prosecution team he said we need a witness's testimony he encouraged the witness more than encouraged to testify against Mr. Williams. I think that this is crazy. A new to the All right. Well, that may or may not be um, an 
a substantive error in these trial proceedings. I've got that under advisement right now, but that. That is that is so. Also would not sad. be an Ayala type change circumstance. So I, I appreciate you presenting this to me, but I'm not going to reconsider bond. Okay. Even though potentially it was not done by a fair tribunal. I don't there. So, all right. There is nothing and I'll, I'll make a determination. And I get what I'll let her finish and then I'll give my synopsis but I will of note this. That um, Judge Krauss, who had a lot of these issues before her in the motion to recuse, her finding, while I think dicta, was that there was nothing improper. She said, you know, maybe I'd have done it differently, but that there was nothing improper substantively with what occurred. So at this point, we don't have, and, and the basis of her recusal was not that Judge Glanville is biased. It was that he um, engaged too vociferously in um setting forth facts and information when he denied the motion to recuse. And that was not um, what the rules require. And so recusal was necessary, but she even, I think, went on to say, but even with that, mm. I don't, you know, I think he could have continued on unbiased. It's dicta. But um, right now, that is your position in the litigation. It's not a factual finding. It's substantively before me. And if that is the case, then there will be a different ruling made that will impact this trial that may result in a mistrial, that may result in a mistrial with prejudice, but that would not impact a reconsideration of bond. Now, if there's a mistrial without prejudice, then bond maybe could be considered then that might be a changed circumstance, but right now we don't have that. Yeah, and again, we got to give it to Judge Whitaker here. She makes a great point. This bond was decided long before this ex parte meeting took place and any error they want to point to in the trial. So it's not really a change of circumstance. What was decided by the previous court still stands just like the jury selection, just like everything that took place before, what are they saying, June 12th, June 10th? Um, so I mean, she's she's right. Unfortunately, it's a it's a shame because we are, we're not really going to know the weight of all that was impacted by what Miss Love and Miss Hilton and Judge Glanville had going on because clearly they did have something going on. It's a shame for these guys sitting in jail. Then I'd like you to address just one last thing that judge and district attorneys come out after mm. the ex parte hearing and not a syllable about Brady evidence. What's up, it all should have been spilled right then. That's an ongoing concern. So my point is, you have the same judge denying bond, the same judge hiding Brady evidence. So I'd like you to consider that. All right. Thank you. I understand. It's wow. not an appropriate consideration. But I, I understand what you mean. All yeah. right. Um, Mr. Huey has a motion for reconsideration of bond uh, with... Asserted change circumstances of um, the ex parte being a critical part of the trial that he was excluded from and having been held longer than he otherwise would have because of the delay um, resulting from that. Do you have anything to add to that, Mr. Matthews? Yes, Your Honor. Good day to this honorable court, Carton Matthews for Mr. Marquavius Huey. I cite Not for Mr. the court Matthews. Wimbush versus the state, 345 Georgia App 54, which is cited in my motion. When a court has previously heard a motion for a bond, its ruling is not subject to change unless the court finds that the movement has presented new information, testimony, or evidence that indicates a change in circumstances. Wimbush, when it talks about new information, new testimony, or evidence that indicates a change in circumstances, 
I would like for the court to consider that the change in circumstances as it relates to this particular proceeding is that when the court denied the bond to Mr. Huey back in 2022, it determined that he did not meet the Ayala factors. This same court in making that determination in 2022, the change in circumstances, the new information, the new evidence is that that same court that denied the bond in 22, that new, that court indicated in or on June 10th, it had a meeting that this court has heard over and over again now with a, right? with a sworn witness, right? And in the transcript, Your Honor, the court that denied the bond to Mr. Huey then, that court engaged in conduct which I believe uh, influenced the witness, caused that witness to reconsider his position that he was not going to testify. That Talking about like Copeland, bond, though. caused that witness to rather than say, I'll sit in jail. Co-signed on the state of Georgia's recitation that no, Mr. Copeland, you will sit in jail until every single defendant on this indictment is tried. So what I'm asking the court to do is look at what is the change in circumstance here? The change in circumstances, we want Mr. Huey. He wants an unbiased, a neutral referee to decide whether or not he is a good candidate for bond. I would assert to this court that that has been clouded because a neutral judge, a neutral referee, would not have engaged in the conduct on June 10th, which essentially is why he has been recused. So I'm asking the court to say, hey, look, there has been new information because that was not information that existed when the court decided that Mr. Huey was not a good bond candidate. That was not evidence. It's a tough argument. When the court decided that he was not a good candidate. And we're looking at a judgment call here. The court has to be comfortable. The court has to be confident that when a request for a bond is made, that the candidate, based upon the change in circumstances, would be a good candidate for a bond. Now, Mr. Huey has been in custody since December 14th, 2021. It's a long time. Now, Judge, we have been out of court, out of session for over a month mm -hmm. and some change and still counting. That delay, Your Honor, is a change in circumstance for Mr. Huey. He is on 23 and 1 at the Fulton County Jail. He's on lockup for 23 hours out of the day. One hour out. We don't have to go over and over what the conditions are at the Fulton County Jail. We know what they are. The news media shows us what they are. He tells me what they are. When I go visit him, I see what they are. So what I'm asking the court to do here is look at those change in circumstances. Now, here's another factor. How much, Your Honor, does it cost the taxpayers of Fulton County, Georgia, and the state of Mr. Georgia? Matthews, that is not an appropriate consideration for bond. I'll yes, it is. 
understood you are. I'm asking we want our money back. Look at Come on now. The resources that are required to have Mr. Huey here every day. That's all I'm asking That's the court to look at. Consideration for bond. All right. So essentially, yes, Your Honor, I'm asking the court Objection. to look at the change in circumstances that I have cited in my bond motion. I'm asking the court to take that into consideration that the decision to deny the bond for Mr. Huey in 22 was made by the recused court. And the change in circumstances that I am alleging were done by the recused court All right. based on judgment calls. Okay. So, Judge, I'm asking the court to set a reasonable bond, set a reasonable bond with conditions. Here's what I'm asking the court to do. Put a number on the bond. I'm asking the court for a $50,000 bond. I'm asking the court that Mr. Huey be required. It's not going to happen. To live at a certain residence here in Fulton County, that he that he be required to have twenty four hour house arrest on a monitor, right? He be required to only come to court and only meet with his attorney from for the for the duration or the rest of the proceedings of this trial if it gets that far. Uh, obviously to have no contact with any other co-defendants in the case and for any other reasonable conditions that this court believe would be meet and proper uh, based upon our request. We believe in 2022 that uh, the Ayala factors were met the court has indicated, obviously, that the other court made that decision. And then this court wants to hear about the change in circumstances. I think I've um, efficiently been able to lay those out in our motion, support it with proper case law. And also, I would just for the record, I would address the case that I cited uh, with respect to the ex parte it. meeting. And that's Scudder versus the state. Two nine. I appreciate him showing that he's going to fight for his client, but this man, he's not going to get it. She already said, I'm not considering any other bond. So y'all just chill out for a minute. Is she going to, is there going to be a mistrial? Is that why she's telling them, Hey, y'all just relax. Even though she makes some good points. I don't know. Y'all let me know what you think. 98 Georgia 438, a 2016 case. What was that site? Is uh, it in your motion? It was in my motion, your honor. Okay. And, um, the Scudder court determined that a criminal defendant has the right to be present and to see and hear all critical parts of his trial. Okay. So forth and so on. That's with regard to that substantive issue. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Which we are alleging is a change okay. in circumstances. A, a change brought about by the court and not by Mr. Huey. And we believe that that month and a half delay where he's had to sit in the jail, we're asking the court to not only be a court of law, but to be a court of equity, which this court is. And we believe that equity and fairness dictate that a reasonable bond be set in this case. Otherwise, any other any other change in circumstances that are not brought about by, by Mr. Huey, Mr. Huey has to suffer the consequence. And that's what he's doing. He's suffering the consequence, Your Honor. Okay. Respectfully. Thank you. Thank you, Judge. All right. So, so that the record is clear, um, the basis for the recusal of Judge Glanville was not that he is biased, was not that the ex parte itself was improper. Uh, it was that Judge Glanville engaged in an exposition on the facts in making his rulings on the motions to recuse. Um, I understand the argument that the court who undertook the original bond consideration um, in the defense's view has become biased, um, but 
uh, that in the same way that I said to Mr. Steele with regard to Mr. Williams, oh, no. if I substantively end up determining that, then it may be appropriate at that time to take up bond again. Um, right now, it is not. And it is unfortunate that this case has lasted as long as it has. It is unfortunate that there have been delays in the case, but those oh, do not, man. in this court's mind, uh, amount to the kind of change circumstances that um, make it appropriate to reconsider bonds. So I'm not going to reconsider or grant bond um, in Mr. Huey's case either. Um, Mr. Kendrick also has a motion to reconsider bond. He so that was denied. Change circumstances that essentially this case has taken way too long, which well, Your I Honor, don't necessarily I, disagree with. But <laughs> I would ask you for Mr. Kendrick's bond motion if you could defer ruling on that until after you rule on the mistrial. All right, I will do that. Thank I think you. That would be more appropriate. Thank you. Oh, wow. So Mr. Weinstein said, hey, just I don't want to file this again. Just just hold on to it for a couple of days and we'll wait until a later date. 